Hello, Save Jerseyans. This is your blogger in chief, Matt Rooney, and we are inching ever so close to Election Day 2013. The U.S. Senate race is out of the way, but we still have gubernatorial races and legislative races right around the corner about two weeks from now. And there are several districts in the state that Republicans are targeting very closely because they think they're prime opportunities for a pickup. I think one of the top pickup opportunities on anyone's list is down in the first legislative district where Jeff Van Drew and arrogant Nelson Albano and their new running mate whose name I never even try to pronounce because I can't. Um, but he was subbed out because Matt Milam was going to lose anyway, so they brought in this poor kid that they're taking advantage of. Um, they're considered widely vulnerable, um, and so Republicans have fielded a very strong slate. Everybody got to meet Ms. Adelise Schmidt, who I had on the Save Jersey blog, I guess, two or three weeks ago. She's the state Senate candidate down in LD1, and she gave us the inside scoop about what the ticket's trying to accomplish this year and where she thinks they're at in the scheme of things. Today, I am very happy to have her running mates for the State Assembly with us. We have Christine Gabor, who is a freeholder in Cape May County, and we also have Sam Fiocchi, who is a Cumberland County freeholder, a little bit further up 49. And they're taking time off the trail to update you, the Save Jerseyans, on where their race is at, and we greatly appreciate it. Christine, Sam, thanks for being with us. Our pleasure. Thanks. Thank you, Matt, for having us on today. Christine, we'll start with you because we're a little old-fashioned here, so we believe in chivalry, and, and the lady always gets to go first. Okay. Tell, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background um, and how you got involved in politics? Keep in mind, of course, that our Save Jerseyans are uh, plenty down the shore. There are, there are tons of them, but people are listening to this all over the state of New Jersey at either end of the turnpike. They're trying to catch up and learn about these races and try to figure out ways that they can help. So tell them a little bit about you. Well, I, uh, I tripped and fell face first into politics, I think. Um, uh, just being a full-time working mom and doing community service, um, usually for my boys and their sports programs, and uh, became friendly with people that were Republicans in the local club and said, you know, why don't you join? You might be interested. Um, and lo and behold, I was. Um, and then an opportunity came up for a committee seat, um, and they were looking for a female, um, and asked me if I was interested. And I usually never say no. Um, that's usually how I end up doing 10 things at once. And, uh, and I became a committee woman in Upper Township, and I, I, I really enjoyed public service. It really made me realize what a good opportunity it was to help others in a much larger way. Um, so I enjoyed that for um, two years, and then I uh, was elected into office as a Cape May County freeholder, which gave me an even broader experience into the lives of many people in Cape May County. Um, I oversee health and human services, which includes our county-owned nursing home, Department of Health and Aging and Disability Services, uh, and that is a true education in what it's like um, to live as an elderly person, disabled, uh, poor, homeless. Um, true, uh, gives me a true perspective on the lives of others, and uh, I think I like to take my education what I've learned about people and their struggles and take that to the next level and be a voice for those who don't feel that they have one here anymore. You are quite the multitasker. Um, I'm inspired and exhausted at the same time, just listening to your resume and hearing about everything you've been doing down in Cape May County. Sam, you are also, like I mentioned at the beginning, a freeholder, um, and you've been involved in public service in various capacities for a while. Um, you also have quite a tough nut to crack, because anybody who knows anything about New Jersey politics knows that Kate May leans Republican, but Cumberland County has been leaning Democratic um, for quite some time. So it's an accomplishment that you were able to convince um, a majority of the voters in Cumberland County to give uh, a Republican a chance, and you've been doing well with it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in public service. Thank you, Matt. Well, I, I, was, I ran my own business. I was actually my brother. We were partners in family business. I was there oh, nearly 40 years. I was a job creator. And, uh, and boy, every year it got tougher and tougher to operate businesses in New Jersey. So when it came for my time to step down as president of, uh, we had a few family corporations, uh, you know, the choice was in front of me. You know, do I leave New Jersey like so many other people have done? Or do I stay here and, uh, and help become part of the solution rather, rather than part of the problem? And I have two 
sons that live here. I have a grandson that lives here. Uh, my family business is still here, even though I'm not involved. And I said, you know what? I said, I really have to see you know, if we can stay and help and, and make New Jersey a better place. I was certainly encouraged by Governor, at the time, candidate Christie. I thought that you know, he had a good vision and a good plan for moving New Jersey, New Jersey forward. So in 2008, that actually is a uh, campaign volunteer, you know, on the county race. Uh, I was helping on the county races. Um, after that, they suggested I run for freeholder the next year. I was um, unsuccessful that year, and it is, it's tough to come on counties a Republican. But the, and I ran for a one-year seat. The next year, I ran for a three-year seat, and, I, and myself and my running mate were both successful. So it doesn't mean that it can't be done, that's for sure. And uh, unless people see you know, the type of service that you have to their, your community, uh, I think it empowers them to come out and vote for you. You know, they, they you know, they see that you know maybe there's hope for uh, those in political office, those in elected positions, because it, a lot of the things that go on today, people have little faith in their elected officials today. So I think it's you know certainly encouraging. And um, you know, I, I gotta say I'm proud of my record as a freeholder. I ran, as you know, I ran for assembly in 2011, and I came very close to uh, winning a seat in a, in a uh, midterm year as governor. So I uh, was certainly encouraged by making another run 13. I was uh, even more so when Christine uh, decided to become my running mate on the assembly side. And uh, we had actually been talking about it for a little while and it came to fruition right after the first of the year. So uh, certainly got to thank her for uh, for running with me and for all the hard work that she does. And I am amazed too because the mother of two and, um, you know, a, a white, uh, a freeholder, a job holder. I mean, you know, Christine is just, And, and, you know, that's... Hey, that, kind words, Sam. Yeah, you know, I mean, you're, 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 you're both... You're both <laughs> that's right. Well, hey, listen. I mean, that's that's what I was going to say. You're both you're both people that are you know very impressive members of your respective communities down in the first legislative district, and that's why I wanted to start out talking a little bit about where you're coming from, and so people could get to know you. Because if I turned on my television this cycle and just believed about you what I heard these commercials saying about you, I would cross the street when I saw you coming at me. Um, according to them, you're these monstrous tax cheats. I mean, you know, some of the things we heard being thrown around by both sides down in D.C. during the shutdown were tame compared to some of the stuff that's been said about you. Um, regular readers of Save Jersey know that many of these smears are being funded um, by super PACs that are backed up by the party bosses and the public sector unions, the usual suspects, the NJEA, etc. Um, so while I love to focus on the issues, and we're going to talk about the issues in this interview, I want to give you both an opportunity to respond to some of these charges. Um, for example, I know that they've accused both of you, I believe, of, of non-payment of taxes, uh, making you both sound like deadbeats. Christine, can you can you weigh in on, on where these ads are off base and you know what effect you think they're having on the race and basically what you want people to know that they're not hearing because they're being bombarded by these ads? Ads. Well, I, I believe that all the ads are targeted at me as being a tax raiser uh, and Sam being the tax dodger. But um, as usual, everything is taken out of context and made it to look uh, like it's something uh, much worse than it actually is um, because they don't have any issues of their own to stand on, so they need to attack us. Um, but uh, I, I've done, um, I think I have done uh, a great job at um, reducing the cost of government in uh, every office that it's held. Um, the tax rate was risen in each instance. However, uh, specifically to the municipality of Upper Township, the stage was set for that local purpose tax um, years before um, I became into office. Um, I was told right after I was sworn in that that was coming and to be prepared to vote on it. Um, so instead of trying to hide from it, um, for fear it may hurt a future election, which a lot of politicians love to do, um, I just rolled up my sleeves and started figuring out how we were going to make this the least painful as possible for the residents. And I reduced the size of our budget, and we made cuts when we needed to. We had a hiring freeze. We did everything we possibly could, and we did a very good job. And as far as the county is concerned, uh, we have decreasing revenue and increased costs, as everybody does. 
And we had the leanest budget both years that we possibly could have. And all the employees and the freeholders got together and worked very hard to be as efficient as possible, not hiring new people, not bringing on more full-time people with benefits, people working and taking on uh, jobs of those who retired and so we didn't have to rehire. Um, all those employees and the other freeholders should be offended by those ads attacking me because it's attacking them. They all worked very, very hard. Um, so, as usual, they took it out of context, top context, made me sound like some kind of monster that wants to make everyone pay more taxes. That's just not true. Right, and I, you know, one of the things that I find most aggravating about, it, and I'm sure I'm, I'm giving voice to something that you feel, um, is that we have these ads being run and funded by these public sector unions that have been the primary drivers of our property taxes. You know, both of you know as well as I do, because you've been intimately involved in county and local government for a long time, that education funding and some of the policies, like the pension policies that are set down into law in Trenton, are the reason why we're paying so much money. Not to say that good municipal government isn't very important, but for these individuals like Jeff Van Drew that have been caucusing with Sheila Oliver and Steve Sweeney for years people who have been driving our taxes northward, appointing judges who interfere in things that should be public policy considerations. It's just absolutely maddening. Um, Sam, why don't you weigh in on some of the things that have been thrown in your direction and explain to people how you are, in fact, not a monster. I know better. Make sure, that, make sure they know. Well, you, you know, um, the thing is, is uh, actually the feedback has been kind of incredible. You know, half the people I run into, or even that my, that my family hears from, are either angry or they think it's laughable. You know, uh, you know certainly, uh, you know, my family's been in Cumberland County almost 100 years, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I have to say, you know, that we have a good business reputation. And, my, you know, myself and my family, we've owned properties in this area for almost 40 years. So, you know, have they been a day or two late paying my taxes? Sure. You know, and we own several properties. And I can't imagine, you know, we go into a room of people that I bet that you read, you have to raise your hands and who have always paid their tax, real estate taxes all the time. I bet you might get a handful of hands. But it, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I have hurt nobody by doing this. Uh, it's hurt. I've hurt myself in a minor way because I've had to pay interest. I bet that I've paid probably less than $100 in interest over the last 40 years. I've never lost a property. I've never had a property on a tax leave sale. So it's... It's kind of ludicrous to put something out there like that, you know. Uh, and there, I said it's, it's, you know, and in some instances, I think it's, it's almost laughable. So. Uh, oh sure, and I mean, listen, I know business owners in New Jersey who are good, law-abiding people who have fallen behind in their taxes. Why are they falling behind? Is it because they're bums? Is it because they're bad business people? Nine times out of ten, it's simply because the tax load is crushing. And in this down economy, it can be tough to meet your obligations. So again, the gall of these people, to me, is just absolutely <laughs> maddening. They went up there into Trenton, Albano, Van Drew, Sweeney, Oliver, hiked their taxes, made it nearly impossible to make an honest living in this state. And then when you're late... <laughs> A few times paying them and their obligations, they turn around with all the money that they have sitting in their war chest and try to smear you. Uh, I'm glad to hear, though, that when you're going door to door and interfacing with the community, people seem to be getting it. Hopefully, there's a backlash. Yeah, there there is a backlash, and that's you know, and I I, I uh, fight this battle all the time on the freeholder board. I I fought against two, uh, or I voted against two tax increases um, last year. We did not have a tax increase and. I keep telling them, I said, people cannot afford to pay anymore. We've talked a lot already about taxes, guys. Um, clearly, that's something that's near the top or at the top of every voter's mind. It's going to be going to the polls this November. But I think, and this is just one man's opinion from having watched this stuff for a long time, there's not a lot of credibility with the average undecided voter with either for either the Republican Party or the Democrat Party and actually tackling the issue of property taxes. They're actually increasing at a much slower rate now than they have for a while, but I think if you knock on a door and you say, hey, I'm going to lower your taxes, people look at you, and sometimes it's justifiable, with a little bit of skepticism, because they've heard it for a long time. I think part of it is educating people about what Chris Christie's been trying to do in Trenton, 
and then at the same time making sure they're aware of what the Democrats, led by Steve Sweeney, Jeff Van Drew, and some of these other folks in South Jersey who were trying to retire this November, make sure that people know that they've been trying to act as a roadblock to Governor Christie's reforms. So let me, let me ask you guys this way, and we can start with Christine. When you go to a door and you knock and you say, hey, listen, I'm trying to work to lower your property taxes, and they look at you like you're crazy, what do you tell them they're going to do when you get to Trenton? How do you explain the Republican approach to actually achieving an affordable New Jersey? Uh, what we do is we explain to them to the fact that uh, Republicans are all about cutting spending. Um, and we want to continue to do that and, and do what Christie has started, but we can't because we don't have a majority in the legislature. They're only going to give them so much. They're only going to go so far. Um, but we need to re- finish those toolkit reforms that you mentioned before. Um, the sick leave payouts are a huge problem, and I've experienced that at the municipal level. Um, and the civil service reform, which I'm experiencing at the county level, when you want to have shared services, which is a smart thing to do, and it's a smart um, thing to do for um, saving money, civil service can get in the way and cause a huge problem with that. So unless we have those reforms or allow uh, government to opt out, um, we're not going to progress as far as we can. Um, the other thing that I talk to people about that we really isn't always on the radar, but because it's something that I've experienced, is um, fraud. Um, we have a huge amount of fraud in our system, and we're trying to help people in need, but we have so many people that have, are taking advantage of the system um, that all that money is being wasted, and all the time that these government employees spent facilitating these programs for people who really don't deserve them but somehow found a way to get them, um, we need to those problems, because not only can we save spending, we can also make sure that that time and money is directed to the people who truly need it um, and that are, are, are worthy of it. Um, so there's, there's a lot of work to do, not just the toolkit. I think there's a lot more that needs to be done besides that. Additional pension reforms, closing the loophole that allows municipalities to charge fees for using everything from recreational facilities that are publicly owned and maintained to garbage collection. Um, These are things that, you're right, I mean, it's a big part of the problem. It's why our lives are still getting more expensive. But Trenton Democrats have served as a roadblock. Sam, um, are you finding that people are aware of what their leaders have not been doing? Um, or is it something that you're finding you're having to spend a lot of time explaining when you're on the stump and when you're knocking on doors? Well, when I'm knocking on doors, uh, you know, most people are, are pretty down. And I think you're correct. I mean, you say you're going to lower taxes, and they do. They, they look at you, you know, you know, why, you know, how we've heard that or how are you going to do it. But, you know, a lot of this is part of a, a large, what I call a larger plan here. You know, New Jersey was... A haven for businesses at one time. Uh, before Governor Christie came in, we were 50th last in the country for business environment. So, you know, he recognized the need. You know, we have to improve private sector enterprise here. We have to make it friendly again for business to stay in New Jersey. And I can tell you firsthand, as a business owner, this became tougher and tougher to operate a business, less profitable. You know, why would a company want to stay here in New Jersey? Why would people want to relocate uh, back to New Jersey? Um, you know, it's less expensive. And I'm not talking about the southern states. You know, Pennsylvania has become a destination state. You know, it's far cheaper to live in Pennsylvania than it is New Jersey. And I think the same study but, you cited had Pennsylvania ranked around 24th in the nation, so significantly you know, better than New Jersey. Second. Yeah, so, I mean, New Jer- you know, New Jersey, you know, has always been at the bottom of the top of all the wrong categories. But, uh, you know, the governor is charging to the governor for bringing businesses back to New Jersey, creating more economic development. Uh, when you bring businesses back to New Jersey and you hire people in the private sector and you create more revenues combined with slimming down government, making more efficient government, a more fiscally responsible government, you know, you know, then you can then you can look at you know, keeping taxes, taxes, business taxes in line, property taxes in line, you know, and that's that's what's going to take. But it's going to take you know concerted effort. Um, the governor needs help. He doesn't have a friendly legislature on the Senate or the Assembly side, and he's done what he can. But, you know, he needs a friendly legislature to help him, and, and that's why, you know, Christine are here. Christine and myself are here. You know, we're helping to, uh, we want to be part of that movement. 
something I said over and over again throughout this cycle um, and take some people back, but I've said over and over again, if you are intending to go vote for Chris Christie on November 5th, but you're not planning on voting for the Republicans down the ballot, in some ways you're wasting your vote. You really are, because if you send Chris Christie back to Trenton without a Republican legislature that can help him further his additional reforms that he's been fighting to achieve but has been blocked at almost every turn, things that we haven't even gotten to yet, like a 10% across-the-board income tax cut, then it's just going to be more of the same. Chris Christie's a talented guy. He'll get something accomplished from time to time, um, but we're never going to really get to what we really need to reach, which is a New Jersey that's actually a place where you can start a business and not have to worry about the government destroying it. Um, Going forward, you guys arrive in Trenton and your freshman assemblyman in January 2014. Presumably, you have a laundry list in your mind of things that you'd like to tackle. What can we expect Christine Gabor and Sam Fiocchi to pursue as an initial agenda item when you get to Trenton? Either of you can jump right in. Christine, what's something that's at the top of your list that you would like to see happen and you'd like to be right in the vanguard of? I want to jump right in with our eight point plan that all three of us have worked together um, to um, create. Um, and there's a lot of work to do on there, but I think we should start at the very top of the list and work our way down. Um, and I think that if we um, continue on with all the work that we've done so far, um, that we'll be successful in accomplishing a lot of those tasks. I, um, economic development um, is the key factor here. And I, I really would like to um, start off with that, I believe, and, uh, and the education piece for uh, training our workforce. So when the development comes in, um, we have trained people ready to go. Sam, I don't think a lot of people realize that, and we were talked about this a little bit last time with uh, Susan Adelizi Schmidt, your running mate for State Senate. South Jersey's economy is still limping along. Um, New Jersey's unemployment rate has dropped. Um, it is coming down a little bit nationally, but you still have double-digit unemployment in many counties in South Jersey, including some that are incorporated in the first legislative district. Um, what do you see, Sam, as some of the major challenges that Trenton's putting forth that we need to tackle? Well, you, know, you certainly hit the nail on the head, and unemployment has been an issue. I mean, nationally, I think New Jersey still lags behind. But frighteningly, uh, the first legislative district, which is all of Cape May County, most of Cumberland, and the small part of Atlantic, you know, on average, hovers around 13%. And uh, that's just, you know, it's just unacceptable. You know, people need jobs, they need work. You know, when we're talking, you know, and I think more in the private sector than they do public sector jobs. So, uh, um, you know, that was part of our eight-point plan is to help, you know, promote businesses, have businesses come, and, and hire people, and, and and let's curb this unemployment issue. You know, it's just it's just a win win for everybody when you do so. You know, it improves the economy in so many other ways. People have more disposable income. So uh, we uh, we had kind of decided that we're not going to wait till January, November sixth. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna get our feet on the ground and we're gonna get going. You know, we're uh, you know this team has worked very very hard, all three of us, and uh, you know we're ready to get ready to go the day after the election. To accomplish everything that we're talking about today, uh, it's very important that you have leaders that you can trust, um, both the people can trust and also that people in Trenton can trust and respect and assume that when they say something, they can take them at their word. Uh, that's definitely become a problem, um, at least for Jeff Van Drew and Nelson Albana, with this whole Troopergate scandal that our readers have been following pretty closely. Um, quick recap, Nelson Albano um, was involved in a traffic stop uh, about a year, year and a half ago now. Um, and long story short, he sent a letter to the superintendent of the state police um, trying to get the trooper that pulled him over canned on the basis of allegations that we subsequently found out were completely 
unfounded. Um, and we know that because we had a copy released to the Star Ledger of the camera that was in the trooper's car. Um, since then, they've ducked, they've dodged, they've tried to make excuses. Um, they, I wish they had been half as creative in their capacity as legislators trying to lower our taxes as they have been trying to get this scandal to go away. Even going so far as to put a letter in the Cape May County Herald that attempted to mislead people as the status of the investigation. They wanted people to believe that Nelson Albano's problems had gone away, but that's not the case. There's still an active legislative ethics investigation ongoing. Um, so it's something that I, I hope is at the top of voters' minds in the first legislative district. Sam, ethics is going to be important, and it's something we need to address. What are some things that you think you can do as a freshman legislator in the winter to begin to reestablish people's trust in their government? Well, Matt, it, it is so important, you know, as elected officials, you know, elected officials need to be held to a higher standard. There's no question about it. And, and uh, this is a pure case. You look at this case, that, you know, that's not the case with Nelson Albano here. And uh, it's unfortunate, you know, they started out by saying, well, uh, Jeff Andrews and the reader, which is much ado about nothing, but, but it is much ado about something, you know. This is why, you know, how do you, how do you support your legislature when you know that he can't be truthful? Especially when he's talking to someone who risks their lives like they're the public safety, like the state trooper. So, uh, I actually, uh, I actually, uh, was asking and, and inquired about the, an ethics, uh, what the ethics board was going to do with this case. They did write me back and they did kind of bipartisan fashion. And they can, and there were two cases that day, by the way, Matt. There was a case of another assemblyman and they voted unanimously not to investigate this other assemblyman on, on another charge. It was a different ethics charge. That's but correct. But they voted unanimously and bipartisanly to, uh, to investigate Nelson Albano's actions. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a, there's a complete vacuum of leadership, and I mean, not only are they not leading us in a, in a good direction, but they're trying to mislead people into thinking that, you know, an investigation isn't happening, that is underway. Uh, Christine, I mean, you know, i, I got to be honest, I've spoken to other people um, that are involved in New Jersey media, that are, you know, crusty old politicos that have been following this stuff for a long time. This is the Soprano state, right? They've seen a lot of really hair-raising stuff over the years, unfortunately, and they think this is one of the most egregious examples of somebody trying to get away with something that's clearly just not right. Uh, do you think there's outrage in your district? Are people angry about this? There's, uh, oh, yes, absolutely there's outrage. Um, you know, I ha I'm in a circle of law enforcement. My husband's a retired state trooper. Um, I talk to uh, friends all the time about this. As a matter of fact, people walk up to me uh, and start talking about this issue. And they are outraged that someone would do this in the career of a state trooper who is just trying to do his job. I mean, anyone um, anyone else who would have done something like this would have been in a lot of trouble. Um, there, and it wasn't just a personal letter. It was on official letterhead, which makes it even worse. You're acting as a legislator. That holds a lot of weight. Um, and and you basically held account. He should be held accountable for that. And, and I just... Um, I, I feel so strongly that this was such a disgrace um, and put such another black mark on our state that we're going to allow him uh, to get away with something like this. And I'm so glad that the Ethics Commission really um, did the right thing and said, yes, we need to further investigate this. And they're going to continually try um, to say this is not a big deal and make excuses, just like you said. But people need to realize that until we hold the people in charge accountable, nothing is going to change. Uh, and it's time for us start um, taking matters into our own hands and voting out the people who we know we just can't trust. He is one of them. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, people think that it's a crude example, but I think it applies. When you have a dog and it constantly wets the carpet and chews the couch and you don't smack it on the nose with a newspaper, it's never going to learn its lesson. If the people of New Jersey continue to elect these people who behave like this, then they can't complain when they lie to them on issues that directly affect their pocketbook. I... There's a causation here. Uh, if someone's going to lie to you about a traffic ticket or how the trooper behaved when they got pulled over, then what's to say they're not going to lie to you when they say they're going to lower your taxes and they're not? Or when they're going to go ahead and try to reform the public pension system and then they don't do it? Uh, we got to stand up and we got to recognize that there's a correlation and it's, it's having an effect on all of our bottom lines. 
we've talked a lot about the negative stuff that's going on in this campaign that's been sur- precipitated by the other side. I thought maybe it'd be nice to begin to wrap up the interview here by each of you telling me something about yourself that you don't think people know. Christine, what's something about you um, that the average voter might not pick up on just from hearing your campaign commercial? I want them to know that I am really no different than they are. I'm just a regular person who goes to work every day, um, tries to pay her mortgage and her taxes, and um, but to have a true passion for public service. Um, I think the hardest part when you're in politics is to convince people that you care about them more than yourself, and that's our uh, politicians' fault. Um, we've created that stereotype um, by having people in office who have their own personal agenda who are bought and paid for by special interest groups and unions, and um, they, they don't really understand that it's the need of people, all the people that are, uh, is the reason why they're there. Um, and I want people to know that I have that commitment and that uh, integrity um, to, to do what I'm supposed to do as an elected official. I understand the importance of it. I respect it, and I respect the people that I serve. And what about you, Sam? You know, my interest here is, is that, you know, I have two sons. I have a grandson here. You know, I want them to be able to live and prosper in New Jersey. So, you know, when I step down from business, you know, my thought is to devote my full energies. You know, I'm, I'm retired from business, so I have the time. So I'm going to be devoting my full energies to this position. I, you know, intend to be a full-time assemblyman. You know, that's what I want to do because it requires a lot of work. So that's why when election day comes, you know, we talked about it the day after, we're going to hit the ground running, and we're going to keep working hard for the district because, you know, we need to move this forward. We need to give better representation that we have. That was one of my passions for running, you know. If the people that are in office are not doing the job. So when you're in the private sector and they're not doing their job, you get rid of those people, and you bring in new people or better people. And that's why Christine and I are here, and that's why we're running. Oh, yeah. I mean, if there was a company called State Legislature, Inc., and I was the CEO, these people would have all gotten canned. I don't know how long ago. No golden parachute out in the street. There's no doubt about it. Guys, it's it's been really great having you here today to talk about the issues, to talk about uh, everything that's going on down in the 1st Legislative District, and to get an idea of what your vision is for the state of New Jersey. But, of course, we're not able to cover everything. There's 40 legislative districts. People are um, taking the time that read Save Jersey to learn about these candidates and try to decide who they can help and what they might be able to do to further the cause. If they want to learn more about your ticket, Christine, where can they go and how can they help you most? Well, they can go to uh, jobsforsouthjersey.com. They can go to Sam and Christine for assembly.com. They can um, reach out through email, and um, even our cell phones are available if they want to ask a direct question to us. Um, I'm more than happy. I, my, I have an open-door policy um, as, a, as a free order. Um, people call me all the time and because that's my job. So if they want to uh, interview me for this job, and they want to speak to me directly, I am more than happy to do that. Yeah, and you, you have to be pretty brave uh, to be a public official and hand out your cell phone. So uh, if anybody need to prove for your courage, there it is right there. <laughs> Sam Fiocchi. That's for sure. Yeah, it really is the truth. Uh, Sam Fiocchi, Christine Gabor, thank you again for dropping in, for talking to Save Jersey. We wish you the best of luck on November 5th. Um, We know you are doing a great job in your respective elected offices right now, and we're sure you're going to serve everybody um, with honor distinction when you get to Trenton. Uh, Please keep us in the loop over the next couple weeks. We're very excited about where we think you guys are at. We think it's looking good. 